Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to, welcome to the Italian American Museum. We have a very interesting program for you today. We don't always, we're not always so blessed with such musical talent. But before we have the main event come on, I have uh, a warm up with somebody who is really very, very special in this neighborhood. Uh, his name is Ernest Rossi. But his grandfather's name was Ernesto Rossi. Ernesto had his, I mean, Ernie, Ernie can tell you a little more about it, but um, <coughs> they're a fixture in Little League. So without further ado, I introduce you to the legend of Mulberry Street, Ernesto Rossi. In fact, uh, several years ago, Michael came into the store and he brought in uh, his CD and we started to play it and uh, we fell in love with it. And ever since, uh, Michael's been coming in all the time. And every time he comes in, he's always coming out with a new CD. I mean, eventually we're not going to have any room on the shelf. <laughs> but this last CD, well, this new one is called Olive You, which is fantastic. But his Christmas CD is out of this world. Uh, this last Christmas that passed, uh, he, Michael probably, uh, Michael brought me in 100 CDs just after uh, Thanksgiving. We started playing them and they sold. And they are really, it's a really fantastic CD. It's not the same old Christmas stuff. It sounds like when you listen to it as if you're in the Mediterranean. That's how beautiful it is. And uh, his new CD, All of You, he does the Godfather the Pablo Piano in Sicilian. It's, it's, all of his work is just fantastic, and uh, without further ado, I, I introduce to you Michael Costello. Where's your stuff? Let's not forget about it. Okay. No. I'm going to introduce you to Michael. 193 Grand Street, right next to Ferrara Pastry Shop. So when you walk by, after you finish your team, you walk by, have a cup of coffee, stop in, and uh, let me entertain you. My name is Michael Costello. And it's a pleasure and an honor to be here at the Italian American Museum. I'm going to do a few selections of my current uh, CD, All of You, and kind of give you my story. Everybody has a story, and, um, and I'll kind of weave my story in between the songs. As uh, our good friend, the ledge of Little Italy, Ernie said, I wanted to include the song uh, Parla Pipiano in my new CD because uh, a professor at Hofstra University had an event last year. And he says, Mike, um, you know, I think of The Godfather and I think of Greek tragedy. And I would love for you to sing that. And I said, sure. So I actually went, did my research, and recognized that there was a Sicilian version called Brucia la Terra. And um, I did it for the event and I loved it. The response is great, and then that's why I included the, the song in, uh, in the CD. So I'm going to start off with that. Yeah. Okay, we have our director, Art, that wants me to use the microphone. How's that? So Calabria is the tip of the toe of the Italian peninsula. 
There's five provinces, Cosenza, uh, Catanzaro, Cotroni, Vibo Valentia, and Reggio. And I'm from the province of Reggio. My mom came from a small town in the uh, Aspermonti uh, Mountains called Seminara. And my father came from a port town about 15 kilometers away called Gioia Tauro. And they were part of the uh, wave of immigrants that bypassed the U.S. and went straight to Toronto, Canada during the 60s. Early 60s, President Kennedy basically curbed immigration to the U.S. from Western Europe. So Italians that want a better life um, ended up going to, to Canada. Toronto has four little Italys, all in the city. And as the Italians climbed up the social ladder and started moving out, the city kept on growing. So the original Italy, Little Italy, like here in Manhattan, the equivalent of Mulberry and Grand, in Toronto it's called College Street. And uh, the second Little Italy is Dufferin and St. Clair. And that is where my parents settled and where I grew up. And uh, after high school, I decided to study music at a school in Boston called Berkeley College of Music. And Berkeley's known to be a jazz school. And uh, my high school teacher said, Mike, you should consider going to study there. And I decided to audition with a liturgical piece instead of a jazz member. I feel like, while some people like to zig, I like to zag. And I said to myself, either they're going to hate me or they'll love me. I ended up getting a scholarship to study there. And uh, after four years of study, I moved to Manhattan and basically embarked on my music career. Uh, I was singing commercials and uh, industrials, and that's how I started making my living. Um, and as a songwriter, I was writing all English songs, basically in pop. And uh, about eight years ago, I embraced my Italian roots. A good friend of mine from Toronto uh, said, Mike, uh, send me all your Italian songs. And at that time, I had five songs recorded. And these songs were never meant to be commercially released. I went into the studio primarily to um, record them and then give them to agents so that they would hire me to perform at their events and parties, etc. So I sent him the CD with five songs. A week later, Frank, he's an attorney, and uh, he wanted to get the CD primarily to give it away as a Christmas gift to his friends in honor of his dad. And um, so he called me up and says, Mike, I love it. What will it take to do a full album? So I gave him a quick lesson in the music business and anointed him the executive producer. <laughs> And he says, what's an executive producer? I said, Frank, you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> so went back into the studio. It was my dad who taught me the love of these great classic Italian Neapolitan songs. So when we get together for Sunday Spaghettata and the Italian radio station would be on, and any time a Neapolitan song would be playing, my father is one of them. Stop the zitta, everybody. No we. He wanted to listen to his Neapolitan songs. And that's how I got a chance to learn this beautiful Neapolitan dialect and sing these beautiful songs. And um, so that's why I dedicated the Aceto CD to him. Then I decided to put the English chorus on the song. And I wanted to release it on my new CD, All of You. We released it as a digital single this past summer, uh, July of 2011, and it ended up going to number one on Amazon. It was my first experience. Il cuore mi batte forte dalla tristezza. La tua voce veniva dal vento, dal 
commercial, um, which was for Herbal Essence Shampoo, and um, and that allowed me to bring up my lifestyle and then move to Manhattan, and um, it's a, it was incredible, but I, I cherish those moments because it gave me the character uh, that, that I have right now and the work ethic and not to give up and to continue moving forward, and um, in the past 10 years, I've been having such a great time. And it finally happened when I said to myself, allow me the possibilities to experience the other things that I'm passionate about in life. And before it was always music, music, music. And when that happened, it was like incredible. Like the clouds parted and the angels uh, high started singing hallelujah. It had that kind of effect on me. And, um, and that began with my wife and I going to Italy for a family wedding. 
And um, it was her first time meeting my relatives. And there's a hundred relatives on both sides, between my mom's side and my father's side of the family. First chance meeting, um, visiting Calabria. And she loved it. And she saw this old dilapidated home. This is the home that I was born and raised the first three years of my life before my parents left. And it looked like a cover of a rock and roll album. No roof, no windows, no doors. There was grass growing in the middle. It was an eyesore. And so uh, having just read the book Under the Tuscan Sun, and my wife being the catalyst, she says, you gotta do something with this. So this commercial that ran three cycles made me tons of money and uh, Napster had just happened the year before, 1999. It was the beginning of the end of the music business. The genie was out of the bottle, and uh, the paradigm of the music business has shifted since then. And luckily, I did not increase my lifestyle, and I did not take that money and invest in music, and what I decided to do was to rebuild a villa. I approached all my siblings, and I said, who wants to come in with me and do this? And my older brother's an attorney. Oh, I got my money tied up in some other investments. And my sister wanted to start a family. My younger brother, he just opened up a new shop. So everybody had their money invested in that things. So it came upon me to redo this. All my relatives in Italy thought I was a Katsuni American. <laughs> Who is this crazy American coming here to Calabria to rebuild this villa? Why are they going to want to come to clubs when they got these beautiful regions up in the north? Tuscany, Umbria, the art cities, Florence, Venice. And I said, those that have done those and now want a different experience. So I knew they were looking to see if I was going to fail. So I took my time. Three years it took. I fought with all the contractors. It was my first project. I didn't know the vernacular of engineering, architect, and this, and that, design. I just knew what I wanted, and I was constantly ripping out pages of, uh, of magazines of the look and the vibe that I was looking to have developed. And fought with everybody, no question about that. At the end, after three years, completed the project, and um, all the naysayers says, hmm, he's not a Katsuni Americano after all. The first year, I rented out eight weeks still learning how to market it. And uh, the second year, 48 out of 52 weeks. Yes. Mia cara mia, non ci credevo io, a domani vado via, con la stessa fantasia, non dimentico, a me sembra chiaro che il tempo cambierà. Come mai ci puoi scommettere in fondo l'anima diventa una poesia, un mondo di giustizia. E di speranza e l'universo uso da noi e mi manca un po' il respiro ti piace di te Um, that's from the All of You See Me, and uh, it was co-written with a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Jim Papoulis, and um, Jim is a graduate of University of Miami uh, Music School, and he was the first uh, producer uh, to actually hire me and um, to sing on industrials, and, and because of him, I moved from Astoria, Queens to Manhattan. 
and him and his family, we became close. I sang at his wedding. Um, unfortunately, and uh, tragically, his wife passed away, and I sang at the funeral. And um, and Jim is a very talented uh, songwriter, composer. He He's very well known in the choral music world. And his music has been performed at uh, Obama's inauguration when the Pope came to Yankee Stadium. Um, and uh, uh, many choirs throughout the world uh, perform his, uh, his works. And, um, and that's called Guarda Questa Terra. Watch, observe the world. And there's a video of the song with beautiful scenes, as you're seeing here, of Visions of Italy on, uh, on YouTube. So if you all go to my website, michaelcastaldo.com, all my videos on YouTube are posted. My relatives on my mom's side of the family would give me a bottle of olive oil. They've been producing olive oil for uh, 80, 90 years. And they would give it to me as a gift to bring back to the States. And um, I went to Jack's 99 cent store, bought these little small decorative bottles, poured the oil in there, and I started giving them out to my friends during the holidays. After the holidays, see a theme on holidays, before and then after. And then the feedback started, Mike, this is great olive oil. Where did you get it? This is my relatives. Oh, Mike, you should import it. And guess what? 2004, the FDA finally proclaimed that olive oil was healthy for you. Something that Mediterraneans have known for centuries. And in fact, you could say that the bottlers and the producers can actually put on the label, you know, a good filler to lower your cholesterol. Uh, that was the inspiration of importing it. So I learned just the same way as the other things. Just did my research, learned how to do the villa. Now I'm going to learn how to import olive oil. And um, got my license to do it, and went to Italy, and contracted with my uncles. My uncles have over 20,000 orchards, and 3,000 of the trees are um, organically uh, produced and milled for the family. So I had to convince them to extend the family by another 100 people or so. And uh, so what started off 25 of my closest friends is now in excess of 600 members. I import it only once a year, only once a year. When it runs out, it runs out. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Dr. Zolkan. So about five hours here at the museum. And to Art Pickle for videotaping this. Thank you, Art, and Jimmy, our trial consultant. And Mike, who much of the stuff that you see here in this museum is uh, from his family. He, he, he's, he just lives up the block. And uh, he was he still lives in the apartment where he was born, 1896. Not that he's that old, but that's the... <laughs> and, uh, and once again, the, the CDs, the olive oil, and the balsamic vinegar, and the brochure for the villa are available. Um, I brought a magic marker if you want me to sign anything for you, and then I'll let you smell uh, the, 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 the perfume. Here we go. Senza fine, con gli amori appena nati, con gli amori già finiti, con la gioia e col dolore della gente come me. Un mondo, soltanto adesso io ti guardo, 
Nel tuo silenzio io mi vedo e sono niente accanto a te. Non si è fermato ma in un momento La notte segue sempre il giorno Ed il giorno verrà Stanotte amore I and many other local Italian singers Oh, our career, the fact that we're singing these beautiful classic Italian songs to the first classical crossover artist that set the stage for us, and his name is Andrea Bocelli. Yes. And so um, this is Conte Partiro. Orizzonte manca le parole, lo so che non c'è luce in una stanza quando manchi il sole, se non ci sei tu con me, con me su le finestre, mostra tutti il mio cuore. Chi hai acceso dentro me la luce che ha incontrato le strade?
Heal 